All right, Acts chapter 7, starting in verse 39. The Bible reads, To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from again, or from them, and in their hearts turned back again unto Egypt, saying, Unto Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we, not, we, not, we wot not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which he made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. All right, I would like to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would uh, fill me with the Spirit tonight, Lord. I pray that um, uh, these men and women would be uh, blessed by the reading of your word, Lord, and I just pray that you would uh, give me utterance to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. So I wanted to read something um, that I found on the internet first, uh, but obviously I want to start out reading the Bible because the basis in the Bible um, would obviously keep this grounded uh, in the Word. Um, so I was kind of studying through, and as, as you just see, uh, there's a symbol that uh, the uh, people of Israel basically set up and made to worship, and they obviously had the golden calf. They sent uh, Aaron to uh, make the golden calf so they could worship this false idol, not the God of Israel. And um, I just wanted to kind of analyze that, so I ended up pulling up a website. It's called Occultopedia. Yeah, there's a Opedia for everything, I'm guessing. But it says in the website, uh, it basically boasts about its intelligence and vast uh, array of um, expertise on different occults. And it says that hexagrams are commonly used both as talismans and for conjuring spirits in the practices of sorcery and witchcraft. It says, hexagrams are also prominent in alchemy, chakra, divination, demonology, Freemasonry, and theosophy. The six-pointed star, the Star of David, right, prominent in the rabbinic lore, is also found in the Hindu, Buddhist, and Janist cosmologies. So we see there's a lot of similarities. It's in Hindu, Buddhist, and Janist, which uh, that's another in, uh, Indian religion, um, cosmologies. Hmm, that makes me think, you know, I just want to translate that for you for a second. It says Satan is basically trying to control people with these false religions, right? So there's no, there's no um, question as to why there would be a lot of similarities or why you would see that. And not only that, you know, he, he, he tries to deceive people. He tries to uh, obviously be deceptive in slight, uh, slight ways. Now, I want you, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to read uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, starting in verse 10, the Bible says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times. Now, you see that word divination. That's the same thing that this occultopedia is talking about, this hexagram, this uh, six-pointed star being used as a symbol for. Now, I wanted to pull something from this site, this website, because they're saying it from their own words that, guess what, this symbol that's propped up is a symbol for divination. So the Bible's talking about we should not have anyone that is practicing divination, any type of sorcery, witchcraft. It goes on to say, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them from before thee. So we see that God hates this type of behavior. He is the only one true God, and he is the only one that deserves our worship and praise. And when people have gone astray and done this type of soothsaying, divination, what they're doing, they're saying, God, we don't want anything to do with you. You've created the whole world. We are without excuse. We understand that you've done this, but we want nothing to do with you. Another name for this uh, quote-unquote star of David is the Megan or Megan David. Now, Personally, I have no clue who Megan is, and she better stay the hell away from our church. But, 
But I don't know where that word comes from. But in uh, 1897, you may be familiar with this, uh, this man. His name is Theodore Herzl. Now, Theodore Herzl established this ideology, uh, what we uh, modern, we, we would call Zionism. So he was kind of the, uh, the forefather for Zionism in the world. Now, surprise, surprise, 50 years later, what happens? 1947, World War II had ended, State of Israel. Oh, this is wonderful, right? No, it's wicked. But when he started looking through um, different symbols and different ideologies, you know, people usually try to uh, come together with their ideas and viewpoints. Well, he wanted to have some type of symbol that could prop up this idea of Zionism, this uh, uh, bringing in, right, this Jewish Israel state, right? And so he looks through and he sees, well, you know, it's good enough for the Hindus, it's good enough for the Buddhists, let's just add it in. It's good enough for all these people, so why not do that, right? Um, And I wanted to, you know, not go any further than to just uh, purely say that the title of my sermon tonight is actually Jesus Christ, the Star of David. Now, if you don't mind, turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 11. I'm going to read a couple verses. I know you're in Isaiah chapter 11, but I'm going to read a couple verses that are going to be in the New Testament as well. All right, so in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10, the Bible says, verse 10 in Isaiah 11, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign for the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Now, I, you know, as we all are Bible-believing, saved Christians, we have rest. In uh, Hebrews, uh, in the book of Hebrews, I believe it's in uh, chapter 4, it talks about the rest. What is that Sabbath? What is that rest? The rest is we can rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Also in Romans 15, verse 12, the Bible says, And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now, I'm a Gentile. I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We all should. But does that mean it only extends to the Gentiles? No. That's not what it means. In Acts chapter 13, verse 47, the Bible says, For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now, yes, he set up Jesus Christ. He sent his only begotten son into the world to be that light unto the Gentiles. But it also says it's to the ends of the world, you know, the ends of the earth. So does that mean it's only to the Gentiles? No, it doesn't. It's it's, it's to the Jews and the Greeks. We are all to look towards and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now flip to Revelation chapter 22. Should be your last page in your Bible. Revelation 22. I want to start in verse 16. The Bible says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things, In the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David. Okay, now I want to stop right there. Jesus is declaring he is the root and offspring of David. Well, we see that that lineage, right? If you read, you go to the the first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1. Uh, In Matthew chapter 1, it says that Jesus Christ is the son of David. That's right there, first line. And you can't miss the fact that there is this royal heritage, if you will, this lineage that Jesus Christ comes from, the royal king David. And so it's funny that they, they, they call this term, they say the star of David. And they almost use it as an a-religious uh, uh, symbol. However, these so-called Jews will use it to prop up their own propaganda to say, no, this is for our religion. Well, the funny thing is, if they would just understand what the Bible says, Jesus Christ is that star. He is that star that that is being uh, prophesied of. And Revelation chapter 13, it's just a couple pages back, if you just want to flip back to it. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation 13, verse 8. The Bible says, And all that dwell upon the earth, 
shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life. Now, this is the understanding that, you know, everyone, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, because when you are brought forth, seeing that light, seeing Jesus Christ, you have nothing, nothing else but to bow down to him. There's, there's no other realization you're going to have. And it says, of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, if he's the root and offspring of Jesse, that means that Jesus Christ was from the foundation of the world. He was before the foundation of the world. Before all things were created, Jesus Christ was there. Now, like I said, Matthew 1, 1, you know, it, it talks about how he is also that lineage. Now, chronologically, if we look at it, he's born after David. No one would deny that. But since God is outside of time, he has existed. Jesus Christ has existed way before David was ever born. Um, also in Romans 1, I don't know if anyone uh, remembers any of the verses in Romans 1, but it says in verse 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to what? The flesh. So according to the flesh, he is made of the seed of David. All right, now I, did, I know I didn't tell you to keep your, keep your place, but I'm sorry. In Acts chapter 7, we're going to go back and read that for a second. Acts chapter 7, starting in verse 39 again. Actually, skip, skip to, um, skip to uh, verse 42. It says, Then God turned and gave them up to worship the hosts of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which he made to worship them. Now, you know, I can't help but think, that some of these churches ought to change their name to Rimfan Baptist Church. I have seen, I, I, now, I, this, it, it sounds like a joke, but going back home, I'm from South Carolina, there's actually independent Baptist churches that fly this so-called Star of David. I'm going to start calling it the Star of Rimfan. That's the name of it. Why don't we start using that word instead? You know, they should change their name to, you know, Rimfan Baptist Church or Tab Tabernacle of Moloch Baptist Church. Or maybe just move Baptists off the name because that's not what they are. And then, you know, people want to ask me, they want to say, well, the way you speak, do you hate Jews? No, no, I don't hate Jews. I have an understanding that the Bible has given me that Jesus Christ is the only one that we, sh we should worship, not some weird, uh, you know, uh, some weird secret society, some understanding of some... Um, uh, some books that they don't even have that knowledge of, but they're just trying to claim, well, you can get to a higher level. And if you understand this, then you move on. Um, no, I mean, they need to be saved just like we need a Savior. Um, and in Psalm 119, I'm going to start in verse 1 and go all the way to the end of the chapter. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but in Psalm 119, verse 28, the Bible says, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts, concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Do you hate every false way? Well, you should, because King David said he hated every false way. And you notice that it's very, very particular about saying that. I hate the false way of Judaism. And I, I, you know, I yearn you to hate the false way of Judaism. Now, extend your hand. If people are willing to listen, you give them the gospel like to anyone else. In John chapter 14, verse 6 Jesus saith unto him, he's talking to Thomas, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now he says, the way, the truth, and the life. He doesn't say that he's a false way because he's not. He is the only way. And if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, you're following a false way. Also in John chapter 1, verses one verse 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, uh, sorry, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning, with God. All things were made by Him, and without, without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness compre comprehended it not. Now in these royal, rural parts of Georgia, 
it gets dark. You don't have lights lit up everywhere. You can see the stars. Now, Jesus Christ is that star of David, like I said. And in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, we read the first part of that. But if you still have your place, if you don't, I'll read the whole verse anyway. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. He says, I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now the star of David is that bright and morning star. Jesus Christ is the star of David. God the Father sent his son to bring light unto this dark world and, you know, my two points in my, this sermon that I wanted to hit on was how the, the world views the Star of David wrong, wrongfully, and they need to understand that Jesus Christ is the Star of David. Amen. Pray with me if you would. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to uh, preach tonight. Uh, Lord, I just pray that, uh, that we would understand that uh, Jesus is our Star and is the Star of David, Lord. I just pray that you would uh, be with us and watch over us. In Jesus' name, amen.